Hi everyone, welcome to Tom's Man Shed. This, uh, this time I thought I'd do a video on a problem I had a while ago of my CCTV cameras uh, misting up at night and in the rain and giving uh, a sometimes totally uh, unusable picture under the infrared light. Now if you've got um, CCTV cameras like this now this is my uh, system at home. It's a good make. It's uh, Hit Vision, Hike Vision, however you pronounce it. Which is a good make. Um, great quality pictures uh, during the daytime and at night, as long as uh, the dome is clear. Uh, and everything. Now I live in a bungalow, so it's quite easy to nip up and clean the dome uh, after a rainstorm and things. But the problem is uh, that you'll probably find that even though so the, the picture is great during the day, crystal clear, crisp and everything, and under bright light, if you've got a bright external lights, it's fine. Once it gets nighttime and the inbuilt infrared um, emitters come on, you get loads of internal reflections off the dome. Uh, particularly if there's a, there's dirt on the dome like from uh, raindrops and, and dust and stuff like that. Now the problem is it's caused by, as you see, the, the lens obviously is right in the middle there, and these lights around the this ring of lights is the actual infrared emitters that come on at night time. The little sensor there right in the middle detects whether it's light or dark and brings the the infrared emitters on which have quite a good range about 30 foot or so and give you a clear black and white picture at night but the problem is because they're a dome camera you get loads of internal reflections off off that glass dark uh, plastic dome now they say make sure this sponge around the lens is pulled fully out and is making good contact with with the inside of the of the dome once it's in place which helps a bit from uh, from some stray light but it doesn't get over the problem so as you know your pictures will look like this as you can see loads of spots and blurs and, and that and you, it's sometimes there's so many you can't you can't see um anything at all the way around this is to either get different cameras which i didn't want to get because i was really happy with these like bullet cameras that don't have a dome around so it don't tend to reflect that infrared light back so much or use these sorts now they call these a pig nose camera for obvious reasons this is a different make a dahua that i did get off ebay hoping it would be compatible with me uh me hick vision hack vision nvr network video recorder but it wasn't it just wouldn't accept it so uh, unfortunately it's uh, it's not being used but I didn't really want to swap all my uh, dome cameras for this sort. The reason you don't get the problem with this, a pig nose type camera, is that the infrared emitter here and the lens of the camera are separated. So you're not going to get reflections from that being bounced back at it inside. So. It is a better design for outside. Really, the dome cams, I think, are really only suitable uh, for, for inside, for uh, quality of vision, because, like I say, that time, they, they can be useless in the rain. So, the workaround is this. It's quite an easy workaround. In that you use... An external infrared emitter. Now 
I've got, um, I've just got these two to add to the side camera. And I got the both of them off Amazon for about nine quid, including postage from China. I did have to wait about a month for them to come, but you can get them quicker for about the same price, just for one if you want next day off, off Amazon. There's loads of different designs. As you can see, this one has got loads of separate emitters, some of them. As you'll see here, these are the ones outside. I've just got the four um, bigger emitters around. And this one is the one at the front of the house. And it's got six of the larger emitters. That does throw light quite a long way. Um, it lights up right over to the other side of the, the cul-de-sac over the street and gives a really, really clear picture. So because these are then mounted separate from the camera you can turn the infrared emitters off in here in the software which i'll show you shortly and just use this as the infrared and that stops all the internal or, or a lot of the internal reflections uh, off the dome you would put it something like that's um if it's looking out this way you would mount the thing there the emitter there behind the camera if you mount it sort of like in in front of the camera it's hard to show on it but if you mount it in front of the camera within the uh, within sight of the camera lens it will show as a really bright because the camera picks it up as a really bright light so it looks like a sun shining down um, so try and mount it um, out of shot of your lens and just flooding the, the area you want to light up uh, with infrared light and that's it it's as simple as that um, if you use that the again these they have a little um, cell in the middle that only brings them on when um, when it's night time you can power them with any 12 volt source you can use either like a a wall plug here they use hardly any current so if you got yourself sort of like a you know a, a three or four amp version of that you could power maybe up to six of these i've had one of these running off a, a 300 milliamp wall charger like that so it's only like 0.3 of an amp and it runs it fine and it doesn't overheat or anything so they take hardly any power um, or you could run them into a, a little proper mains mains to 12 volts transformer up in the loft or something like that with uh, with the low voltage wiring going to your, your emitters um, but whatever you do it's a really good solution so instead of having to buy a whole new camera 90 100 110 pounds uh, a pig nose one um put one of these on it cost about eight or nine pounds like i said i did go a pig nose camera um here it is at the uh the front of the house picture of it at the front of the house and it's great it's a, uh, about a, a megapixel more than the the dome ones because it's, it's a newer camera but the disadvantage is it doesn't have sound in or sound out. So I have rigged microphones up to a couple of the other cameras and they are very, very sensitive and they pick up sound great. Um, so if, you, if you're happy with your, your, your dome cams other than the nighttime rain infrared problem, this is the way to go. So that's basically it. I'll just talk you through the software now on how to uh, disable the infrared emitter in each one and i'll show you some comparison pictures um using the internal emitters and the external emitters in exactly the same uh condition the same uh, rainstorm and things and uh, you judge for yourself which you think is best okay so right as you know
So, you'll see already. I'll just bring all oops, sorry. Just bring up here the three cameras. Okay, that's before cameras. Now, these two here, this is using a separate IR emitter, and as you can see, it's going right, right down the street. This is using, uh, this is one of the pig eye ones. This is the new pig eye one there. I had three cameras originally. I added one extra. And this is the pig eye one that, um, that isn't prone to the, the misting up, for, like I showed you in the video. This is my side camera. This is using its, uh, its internal IR emitter at the moment because I've been using its light to do this demonstration and... Uh, do some different things so this is the culprit the black the back one now I've sprayed it's not rained for a, for a bit so I've sprayed the dome with um, water earlier on about an hour ago and these are the water droplets that are left on it and this is what happens this is what you'll notice what happens in the rain it sometimes gets a lot worse than this um, huge great blobs all over the place and it's just like a fog you can't see through it but you can see the problem now this is because it's it's using its internal infrared emitter and that's reflecting off the uh, the, the dome the plastic of the dome so what i'll show you now is the dead easy workaround first of all we go into click up the top here configuration Better say you've done this if you've messed with your cameras, but if you haven't, click that configuration, then camera management IP camera. Now these are the actual IP addresses of each individual camera. So the one in question is that one. So as I go into that, again, you've got to put username and password for each individual camera as well you can have everyone different if you want I just use the same and there you see so this is your actual camera control area now so what you do click on configuration at the top there And you can set up the, uh, you know, all the, um, brightness, contrast, saturation, blah, 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 there, under basic configuration image. But to turn off the IR emitter, which you would think would be in here if it's not, um, it's no good at looking at uh, day night switch there and smart IR on or off because that is nothing to do with it. All that does is, is alter the infrared when it's um, a close up. Uh, so even with IR off, the IR is actually on. So that's, that's just smart, smart IR. The menu we need to get into to turn the infrared emitter off is under here, advanced configuration. Then system then at the top the extreme right hand tab service and that little box there enable IR light untick that and click save right now if we go back to the live view now That has now turned the infrared light off, and as you can see, it's total darkness. Now, I'm in this shed at the moment. 
So I'm going to go into the house and turn on an infrared light, but this one is going to be, this is an external infrared light, but it's going to be mounted in front of the camera. It's uh, along the eaves, but uh, a good, probably 10 foot away from, from the camera. But the camera is going to find, find it will be within the, the lens's view, and you'll see it flaring in this. So this is all in real time, uh, as you can see in that corner there is a big flare because of that light but you'll see all them splodges have gone and this is the same, same night, exactly the same night. So what I'm going to do now is turn that one off so again I will just nip in the house if you check the timer below you will see all I'm editing out is me walking into the house Plugging external. Now you'll see how uh, how much better that looks. So that's it with the external thing. Now I've altered it. I'll show you in a minute some settings that you can alter whereabouts it illuminates i've set it to that and i'll go out now and, and show you why in fact first of all i'll show you on here so again if we go back into configuration image now this bit here is important backlight settings now I've got I've messed about and I've found my favorite setting is center there you can have it off up down left or right as I click them you'll see the difference so that's off up you'll see it moves up it does actually look like it's illuminating it better but the trouble is anybody's face gets blown out down again and it seems to move down a bit left this isn't it's not a motorized lens or anything it's just altering the way it's uh, it's responding the camera left right so well, like I say, I preferred center. The reason being, if I put it on, where was it? The one that's illuminating the shed the most. So that was it, that one. Right, if I put it on that one, if I go outside there and stand outside. Right, as I come outside now, you'll see because I've got that backlight setting of the infrared emitters set to illuminate the shed, it's also blowing me out. So if I wanted to identify the, uh, the face of anybody, say, breaking into my shed or whatever, I would be struggling because that light is is so bright. So you're best actually illuminating it like I've done now. You'll see it looks quite dark on the shed itself because I've set it to, uh, I think, left instead of centre or top. But on the person, 
but it's much much better it's illuminating me much better and as it does so as i come near the thing you'll see the background goes almost black well that's that's not the separate infrared emitter doing that that hasn't got any electronics to sense anything like that like the the internal ones of the camera but it must be the the iris of the camera is adjusting to get an overall good contrast so as i walk to round about the shed and just in front of it if the uh the evil scrope burglar in my house looked at the camera hopefully we'd get a picture of him i've just gone in now to uh, alter it so realized it was still set on this screen quite small so i'll give you a a live view of it. Let's pick the right button. And I'll give you a bit a uh, bit clearer view. So there, see the shed itself is quite dark because I've purposefully got it set that way with the the backlight compensation over to the to the left. But you can experiment around with these yourself in the settings that as I showed you earlier on. But uh, there, it's me. So it looks a white fleece, that, but it's actually uh, a pitch black one. And you can see uh, I do look a lot um, clearer. And if we go back into configuration and where are we? Uh, system I'll unplug the external light turn on enable internal light save and then go back to live view You'll see how bad it is again. So let's just see what, what that looks like. So as you can see, it's not actually with the, the rain on it there, it's not actually too bad, but it can get a lot worse than that. When I demonstrate the front cameras where I, I throw quite a lot of water simulating really bad rain. Um, you'll see that uh, it's totally obscured by water droplets, but uh, just for these one or two on, it could still pick up, obviously, image of the, the assailant, but any more than that or any dust mixed with these water droplets, and it'd be uh, totally illegible. Now, I have got, of course, some um, pretty good security lights, uh, so... If somebody comes around the back or or in front anyway, uh, they will turn on the pretty good uh, security lights. They're so uh, bright that it actually does turn the cameras back to daylight mode and everything's in colour. So basically, the uh, I'm only using the infrared light for monitoring it when when I'm not at home on my phone and things like that. But as you see, I've just turned them on in the house now. And they've come on, and again, you can see there, I'm actually in a black fleece. Well, it looks white in, under the infrared. But you can see how clear and how bright them lights are. Uh, good enough to, to send the camera back to full colour mode. So I would get a pretty good look at the, uh, the assailant's uh, face anyway. And uh, as you can see, the water droplets, which are still there on the, on the back camera, don't affect it as much in in daylight under or under security lamps which are the same as daylight so that's the uh the security light going off at the back now it's timed down it's gone back and you can see there the uh, the droplets as bad as as bad as normal so just before we leave this uh, section, I've got another bit uh, bit more yet left in the video where we go through the same effect on the front room, the front, I keep saying front room, the front lights, front of the house lights where I throw water at them as well.
just to demonstrate it, it again uh, but we're just setting everything back to how, how it is permanently and as you'll see I'll just be turning the two uh, in this video the front and the back on but there that's the front I've got it sort of swung over illuminating the garden more leaving the path a bit dark so I can pick up better faces on the thing and again there you can see it's illuminating the shed okay but leaving the, the left bit of it dark to get the to get the faces spot on okay now this is uh, a week after um, I did the test on the rear camera so it's just to show you again on the front camera the difference at the moment it's got it's running on the internal infrared emitters the ones that will give a load of reflection once I uh, splash some water on, on the dome uh, at the moment the dome is it's clear I've cleaned it and I'm going to walk outside and just walk up to that tree and walk up the drive uh, just to show you the difference as you see the infrared light it is going quite a distance outside but it's a very um, sort of like a, a washed out sort of grey effect um, so bear with me I'm just leaving my shed now I'm going to walk up to the front and walk, walk back again I'll also be um, talking I'll stop on the drum talk just to show you that uh, the the mic is the external mic which is just a little three or four quid thing from uh, eBay uh, it is quite effective One, two, three, four, five. You should be able to hear me uh, talk in a normal voice. Um, I've just, just a cheap microphone. It's, uh, you say it's, it's reasonably effective. Okay, so I'm back in the uh, back in the shed then, uh, back in the shed now. Hopefully you heard heard that um, picking up my voice outside. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go outside again and move them step ladders over, and I'm going to uh, splash some water onto the uh, the dome just to simulate how it would be in the rain or just after the rain. So again, bear with me. I'm just leaving the control room, aka Tom's man shed, and uh, I'll be back soon. Hi 
Okay, doke. All right, back in the shed now. Oh, that's worse than I thought. So, as you can see, uh, I've splashed the water at it, and it is uh, absolutely undistinguishable. Um, there's so much reflections around the edge that it's baffling. Thing that's gone really dark in the middle. So this is all in real time. So what I'm going to do now is, as before, if you follow me uh, pointer at the top there, I'm going to go into configuration and unclick enable IR light. Don't forget, forget this flickering UCAM 7 down in the bottom right. I don't know why, why that's come up, but it doesn't affect this. Um, don't forget, if you don't see that enable IR at, it's under this service tab. And that only appears when you're on advanced configuration. If you're just on basic configuration and you click system, the three tabs there at the top aren't there. So you've got to click advanced, system, and then these three tabs here appear in the end one service click that right we'll un tick the infrared light now click save so that's the internal infrared light on that camera is now off and if we go back to live view you will see that's the light off i mean it's better with just no light than the light itself but as you can see everything's in darkness this reflection here is is it will be due to uh, some water on the uh, on the lens but pretty useless because it is total blackness around so what i'm going to do now is again it's all in real time this so i'm going to plug in i've got it on an extension lead normally this is plugged in all the time but it's just to show show you look because it's a front of the house i'm now plugged in the external infrared emitter and it's the biggish one with the six um, lights on it. This one here in the uh, in the picture. Now that's the light on now outside, and you can see it's a lot better. Again, I'll unplug it. I'll plug it in. Now it's better where it comes up the drive. I've I've diverted it to that direction. Um, on purpose, trying to get the best image if somebody was coming up the drive. Um, it is very hard because the grass, as you'll probably know, is quite reflective of, of infrared light, so you get a blow out there. Um, but don't forget now as well, the lens, the, the dome is covered, is still covered in water. I've just splashed it and this is how it is now with the uh, the separate infrared emitter which is quite a way along the wall um, now on so i'm going to do the same again i'm going to walk up to the tree uh, this tree here and then walk up the drive um say a couple of words and you should see hopefully it gets me face a bit better and it is after all faces are what you're trying to get if if there is somebody here on your property so bear with me i shall uh, be back soon Right, back in the shed again. Good grief, it's uh, 12th of April and it's bloody freezing out there. So, hopefully you saw 
obviously I couldn't see that, I'll see it when I play it back. You, you saw that I was hopefully a bit clearer. It's very, very hard. I know as I'm walking past there, you get ghosting. It is very hard at night trying to get a balance right of everything, trying to get the, the intensity on somebody's face so it doesn't blow them out. Um, but you don't want it too dark. Um, various settings, shutter speeds and everything, you can play around them. But basically the idea of this video is to show you the difference with using an, uh, an external infrared light and that will uh, eliminate a lot of your problems. So, as you see, it's all, uh, tell them out of breath, not very fit. <laughs> um, so it's all done in, in real time, this as you can see. So and just to prove it, I will now go back to... Again, we'll unplug that, unplug the external light, and I'll go back into configuration and turn on the internal, there we are, enable internal light, save, live view, and there we are, it's, it's rubbish, and it? you can see it's absolute rubbish. Um, let's bear with the noise on the mic and just sorry about the clunking I had a, a cloth under the mic insulating it with some sound so just to show it's uh, it is in uh, in in real time I'll now go and I'll wipe that water off off the lens so you'll see it'll come back to as good as the uh, internal infrared gets but you can see that all that water on it doesn't really affect it when you're using an external infrared source. So, bear with it, you might see a, a pretty ugly face very close to the lens soon. Yeah. back in the shed now in the warmth so yeah there you are lens is clean now and that's as good as it's going to get with uh, with the internal IR emitter infrared emitters but like like I say it's a very washed out -ish sort of light I could alter the brightness and, and everything but then it messes up the daytime settings so basically that's it um, I know it's been a bit drawn out um, I had the noise the microphone turned off for that so you didn't uh, didn't hear me um, I know this video has been a long and drawn out one but I wanted to do it in real time just to show you there's no uh, no trickery involved and uh, yeah it's uh, 100% better with that. We're just going to do it one final time. You'll be fed up with this now, but yeah, one final time. Infrared off. Save. Well, that is how it's going to stay. Um, I'm now going to take the extension lead out. I'll plug it in for now, but I'm now going to take the extension lead out and, um, and put it in there. Uh, how it is normally plugged in uh, all the time like i said a little transformer i'm using it's just a standard thing i got off um i had lying around at home a standard 12 volt 2 amp transformer it's only using as you saw like eight watts when the, when the infrared light is on so the little tiny ones i showed you at the um 
beginning of the video we'll probably use even less than that um yeah um so like i mentioned before i have got some pretty good security lights as well now i'll probably put a link in the description for them i've tried loads and loads of different security lights and um well basically i'll um i'll do a head to head on that later on but uh, for now i'm just going to uh, show you the um, security lights and go go around to the front of the house and plug them in and uh, i'm going to wait for it to go off and then just show you walking down the street to put them on again so again bear with me i'll show you how effective they are So I've uh, I've now gone into the house and I'm plugging in the security light. And as you can see, when, once it comes on, it's good enough to give a full colour. The camera thinks it's daylight, so it goes to day mode and it's bright enough for colour. So I'd get a pretty good impression of uh, anybody coming up the drive. So what I'm doing now is I'm just uh, I'm reeling in extension lead because i've been using it this front one on the extension all the way to the shed so i can uh, can plug it in there it's now gone off again and i've walked up the street it's a bit of a time delay to turn it on you can see it uh, it came on when it was quite a few yards from the right back in the shed sorry about the delay of this uh, I'll edit as much as I can of it out, but as you can see, they are really good and they've been so reliable. Uh, I've tried loads um, on uh, from Lidl's and Aldi and all sorts, Lovano looks and things, and they're nothing like as good as these. So if you want some really good quality uh, lights, they don't go off, give false alerts, and they trigger every time. That was just me. I went and stood up the street till it shut off. I've got it to shine for about a minute. And I went and stood up up the street. And uh, you can see how, uh, how how they came on. And I was, you know, a good few yards from from my house. And uh, like I said, they've been they've been absolutely totally reliable. The ones I've got around the front now that you've just seen, uh, the original ones, which are probably five, five or six years old, and the ones at the back, probably about three years old, are slightly more powerful. Um, uh, same manufacturer, so I would definitely, definitely recommend them. You can see how bright they are. They just turn your, your CCTVs into, uh, into day mode and uh, that's it one last thing before i go um what i will do is i'll just go and splash some water on the front room the front room the front camera the front turret camera the pig nose camera just to show you that that isn't prone to uh, the same thing the dome cameras are, are prone now i've just splashed exactly the same amount of water as i did to the dome camera and as you saw on that one it completely obliterated the picture whereas on uh, on this turret camera it's hardly affected it it's got a splodge there in the middle but uh, it's still a totally usable uh, picture all because the infrared light is in a separate place okay back again as you see so to reiterate, um, yeah, if I was starting again from scratch, I'd probably go turret cameras, pig nose cameras all around the house because they do give uh, a really good uh, good results day and night. But like I said, I'm not getting rid of my dome cameras because uh, in one way they're better than the turrets because they've got sound in and out, which the turret ones don't. Um, and, to, you know, they're a lot dearer, the turret ones. And... Uh, I'm quite happy with the dome ones with the external lights, so 
basically that's how to do it and, uh, and uh, just before I give a, a few uh, final closing thoughts in a uh, head to head uh, I'll just show you all four cameras plugged back in this is how it is normally so top left using an external infrared top right is using the pig nose bottom left is using the internal infrared uh, I haven't got around to putting one on that one yet and the bottom right one uh, the shed there is on the um, the external infrared as you'll see the bottom left one the side view that is a bit more wishy-washy than the others so uh, I will have uh, an external IR emitter on that very very shortly and then all four will be uh, completely weatherproof so uh, Right, just have a few more words and final thoughts and then we'll, we'll close up. Okay, welcome back everybody. Um, running in and out of that cold the other night uh, deserves a coffee. It's a few days later, I'm in the warmth, but the coffee never hurts. Great. Um, yeah, you may have noticed as well, I'm now on my uh, brand new uh, camera and microphone as well, so... Hopefully the quality of any new um, videos I put up will, will be a bit better. Yeah, I hope it was of use to you. It did go on a bit long, I know, but I wanted to do um, all the, the tests in real time. So I know uh, there was a lot of it seeing me running in and out of the shed and running around the front and everything. But at least it did show I was doing it in real time and uh, there was no trickery involved or anything. And it was all, all done. So, as you can see... The only way to stop these splodges, water droplets and dust um, marks giving you massive infrared internal reflections on a dome camera, you, you've, um, you've, you've two alternatives. Either ditch your dome cameras for um, bullet cameras or, or turret cameras like this. Like I said, they nicknamed them, they nicknamed them Pig Nose, or they're called turret cameras. And as mentioned before, because the, the lens and the infrared emitter are separate, you don't get them reflections, as I showed you. Um, but it's a shame to ditch perfectly working camera. And like I say, I love my uh, Vision Dome cameras because they've got sound in and sound out. Um, eventually, I'm going to rig up some tiny little speakers to give me sound out of, uh, facility. But they, they do work well with the microphone. So why not just add some of them turn the infrared light off add some of these and uh, jobs are good now i'm going to put a link below to to these i was recently scrolling through uh, amazon and i found four of these for about nine pounds so i'll try and put that link on if i can find it they were from china like, like these ones were i paid about nine pound for two but this was nine pound for four pieces including postage I uh, don't know how they do it from China, but it is about be prepared to wait three or four weeks. So if you're in a rush, there's loads available on Prime next day delivery, but it'll cost you twice as much money. But any of the infrared lights uh, emitters on there will, will do. I measured this as well the other um, day and it's using four watts of power. So only four watts of power. So. Again, nothing to uh, next to nothing to run, and the little um, light sensitive cell only turns it on at, at night anyway. So, I hope this video has been of use. I've tried, there are other videos online that say try uh, Rain X and coatings, and I've tried Rain X. There's two Rain Xs, one for glass, one for plastic. I've tried that. Make sure you get the plastic one if you are going to try it. It was debatable whether it helped at all. The, the drops may have run off a bit quicker, but it certainly didn't stop stop all the, the, the effects we're trying to stop. And also a silica gel bag uh, or granules inside the lens. There's already a little bag of silica gel by Hike Vision in, in the, uh, the dome cams anyway. It's not anything to do with internal moisture. It's the... Uh, the light reflecting off the droplets on, on the dome so so there's your solution uh, and quite a cost-effective one hope this video has been of uh, some use uh, stay tuned if you do like it um, click on the like button 
It'd be great to get more than about 10 visitors, which is I'm getting on the other videos, or on the other videos. And uh, again, click the links below. Um, I'll put the link for the security light in there as well, uh, if it's still it's still there on Amazon, because uh, it is a, a really good security light. So I'll put a link for for some of these and a link for the the security lights. So I'll see you all again soon. Bye for now.